first, there was the Ruger Blackhawk. The Ruger Blackhawk was followed by the Ruger Vaquero. Not the original Vaquero, not the old Vaquero, not the new Vaquero, but simply Vaquero. The Ruger Vaquero was a six-shot, single-action revolver manufactured by Sturm Ruger & Company based on the new model Ruger Blackhawk frame and was introduced in 1993. Stay tuned, because I'm going to tell you all about the Vaquero. The Ruger Vaquero is, essentially, a new model Blackhawk with fixed sights consisting of a front blade and a notch mill into the frame at the rear. The first version was a 7.5 inch barreled revolver chambered in 45 Colt with a simulated color case hardened framed in blue barrel, grip frame, and cylinder. This was followed by models with a 5.5 inch barrel and a 4 and 5 8 inch barrel based on the other common barrel lengths of the Colt single action army. Two major variants of Vaqueros exist. The original Vaquero was marketed from 1993 until 2005 and was slightly larger than the Colt single action army. The new Vaquero, produced from 2005 to the present, is closer to the dimensions of the Colt single action army. Let's run through the specifications of the Vaquero, the original Vaquero, before I dig into the details. What you are viewing is a highly polished stainless steel version of a 45 Colt chambered Vaquero that has a 5.5 inch barrel. The Vaquero does not follow the traditional western style single action revolver, but before I get deep into the detail, I need to clear up a matter regarding terminology. Some folks refer to the early model Vaquero as the old model. Old model Vaquero perhaps isn't the proper term, as old model refers to the three-screw pre-transfer bar Ruger single actions. Everyone knows what you mean when you say old model Vaquero, but really there is only the Vaquero and new Vaquero. The difference is that Vaqueros were built on a larger frame, identical to the Black Hawk frames. They had XR3-RED grip frames, and some had bird's heads, and can handle most ammunition that you feed them. New Vaqueros, on the other hand, are built on a smaller frame, more similar to the original Colt Single Action Army. They have beveled cylinders and XR3 grip frames, 
which are slightly smaller than the XR3-RED grip frames. Most people will tell you not to shoot heavy loads out of the new Vicaros, especially the 45s, because of the smaller frame size. But it is safe to fire heavy loads in the Vicaro because it is built to handle them. The Vaquero does not have a reverse index direct alignment pawl as found on new Vaquero models, which stops cylinder rotation so that the desired loading and unloading port aligns perfectly with the chamber. New Vaqueros also don't have the faux case colored cylinder frame. Only all blued or stainless steel versions are available. Cylinder diameter and length are greater on the Vaquero commensurate with the larger frame and to accommodate longer cartridges, such as a 44 Magnum and longer 45 Colt cartridges. The larger diameter also means that there's more beef between chambers, most important with the 45 application, as in hot loads. A high blade and permanent front sight gives the eyes something to focus on when aiming, albeit they are hard to see against the notched rear sight. Below the front sight is a well-blended cold hammer forged barrel with ultra-precise rifling. Just below the barrel is a crescent-shaped ejector rod head that provides enough real estate to operate the lengthy ejector rod, which is capable enough to shed the chambers of those lengthy 45 Colt cases. Note that there are no markings on either side of the barrel or under the barrel, as with the new Vaquero with a safety notice on the bottom of the barrel alongside the ejector rod and spring housing. The barrel and ejector housing are beautifully integrated into the also highly polished stainless steel frame. Just in front of the cylinder on the left side of the frame, in its usual place, is the spring-loaded base pin release. The cylinder to forcing cone gap is important to revolvers. It must be of a distance that will not bind the cylinder after the face of the cylinder is coated with firing residue, but tight enough to restrict as much side flash as possible. The measured cylinder to forcing cone gap, or more commonly referred to as the flash gap, is five thousandths of an inch and is well within the acceptable limits of four thousandths to eight thousandths of an inch. As the hammer is pulled to the rear, the cylinder rotates to the right, as do all Colt single-action revolvers. The top strap is beautifully part of the frame and provides a nice place to have a notch to use as a rear sight. Loading and unloading a single-action revolver is a slow process compared to quick magazine changes of a pistol. Colt single-action revolvers, and many clones of, require pulling the hammer to the half-cock position to both load and unload. Ruger single-action revolvers are different. A simple outward push or pull of the loading gate without putting the hammer in the half-cock position is all that is needed for the cylinder to rotate and assist in the loading and unloading process. When the loading gate is open, the cylinder can be rotated to the right or left, unlike Colt and clone single action revolvers. The Vaquero does not have a reverse index pawl that stops cylinder rotation so that the desired ejection and loading point aligns perfectly with the chamber. With the Vaquero and also Ruger Blackhawk revolvers, one had to be careful with rotating the cylinder to avoid over travel. That would make the chamber alignment, well, out of alignment enough so that expended shell casings could not be ejected by the ejector rod, as the shell casing would butt against the frame. The advancement of the Ruger loading gate makes loading and unloading a safer proposition to make, as the hammer is prevented from moving all the way rearward into the cock position, which leaves the hammer resting against a transfer bar safety block during both processes. Speaking of the hammer, the hammer is a high and mighty nicely curved affair with a valley deep enough and nicely serrated hammer spur to 
to accommodate cocking and decocking of the revolver. There is no Colt clicks heard as the hammer is cocked as found on Colt revolvers and clones thereof. There is only the rest or full cock position. Being of a single action nature, when the hammer is fully cocked, operations are transferred to the trigger. The trigger resides in the trigger guard that, while small, can accommodate a gloved hand. As the hammer is moved to the rear, so is the round, curved, and highly polished stainless steel trigger, whereupon a very, very light 1 pound 6.5 ounces of trigger pull to the rear will drop the hammer. There is no hint of slack when pulling the trigger, just a consistently soft feeling wall until a very clean break is felt and the hammer falls, after which there is only an almost imperceptible over-travel felt. This trigger is much better than the trigger on the Ruger Blackhawk and New Vicaro that I recently reviewed. All Ruger single action revolvers use a coil hammer spring in lieu of a flat spring as found in Colt and cloned single action revolvers. This makes for a more powerful hammer strike on a primer and therefore more reliable ignition. Also as highly polished as the rest of the revolver, the grip frame is typical of single action revolvers and should be friendly to even the smallest of hands. For my hand, the grip length is perfect as long as I take a high hold on the handle. With a low hold, I can wrap my little finger onto the butt, but I prefer a high hold with single action revolvers that places the hammer spur as close to the firing hand thumb as possible, but which also will not interfere with the support hand thumb if used for cocking. The original wood Ruger grip panels with Ruger logo remain on the specimen. These grip panels look great and feel great on the Vaquero and are nicely fitted. As a side note, the Ruger logo is surrounded in black, a tribute to the passing of co-founder Alex McCormick Sturm, who died November 16, 1951, at the age of 28. The second to last thing I want to mention are the frame markings. Ruger did a really nice job in keeping markings to a minimum on this revolver. The only right side frame markings is the unit serial number, while the left side frame marking is only the model, Ruger Vaquero, and the caliber. One last thing before I move into the range session is the look and feel of the revolver. While a bit on the heavy side, due to the all stainless steel construction, the Vaquero feels well balanced in the hand and not barrel heavy as one might expect. This is an absolutely gorgeous looking firearm and anyone who owns one should feel pride in ownership of this fine example of a single action revolver. Now, how about we get some range time in? Having shot and producing a review of the new Vaquero, I was very interested in how the Vaquero is going to respond at the range. So I tripped to my favorite outdoor range, Clybell Shooting Range, inside the Charlie Elliott Wildlife Center, just below Mansfield, Georgia, and afford me the opportunity to wring some steel and satisfy my curiosity. With some Fiocchi 250 grain cowboy loads on hand, Let's carry on with the session.
With the popularity of cowboy action shooting, came demand for a single-action revolver that was more traditional in appearance. As the standard Ruger Blackhawk departs from the single-action army looks due to its adjustable sights, Ruger offered a fixed sight equivalent to cater to buyers wanting a more traditional appearance. In all other ways, the Vaquero was identical to the Blackhawk, though offered in slightly fewer variants. The original Vaquero was offered in 357 Magnum, 44 Magnum, and 45 Colt. After some time, Ruger went with a smaller frame to more closely resemble the actual size of the Colt Single Action Army, changed the name to the new Vaquero, and dropped the powerful 44 Magnum from the lineup. While keeping the smaller size, Ruger later went back to the simple Vaquero name, although new Vaquero is clearly marked on the frame. The Vaquero is an excellent performing single action handgun. The Ruger Vaquero incorporates ease of reloading and safety features not found in the Colt single action army and Uberti reproductions of. And that appeals to many who prefer a simple alternative to pulling the hammer to a half cock position to load and unload. Although the Vaquero is no longer manufactured, being replaced by the new Vaquero, many prize the heavier Vaquero over the new Vaquero, simply because the Vaquero can handle 357 Magnum, 44 Magnum, and 45 Colt ammunition with a plume. 
whereas the 44 Magnum, as stated previously, has been dropped from the new Vicaro line. Ruger revolvers have always been known for their rugged reliability, and the Vicaro is no exception. However, I believe that the Ruger new Vicaro is the dominant revolver in CAS and with sports shooters alike, with models like the Bisley and Bird's Head grip frame models. Well, my friends, that ends this chapter of the Range Ronin Chronicles. I hope that you found this review informative, and if you like, click the links in the description section for my reviews on the Blackhawk and new Vicaro single-action revolver. Until we meet again, be vigilant, be armed, and be safe out there. Some firearms, I've got friends that have never played.